All right, so there are three moves that the Yankees, I think, can still make to make the roster a little bit more efficient at this point. You know, we're heading into the crunch time now. They're still reeling. They haven't put together a string of consecutive wins in a while. But there's still a couple of moves I think they can make. And obviously three counter moves to offset these moves to stay within that 26-man roster limit uh, in order to potentially make it a little bit more efficient, maybe a little bit more balanced, and give it a little bit more energy. So I want to go through that right now. And you let me know what you think. Give me your feedback in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do. And if you do, hit the notification bell so you don't miss other videos. I, want you to, I don't want you missing any good Yankee content. So, and um, and I, want you, I want to know what you think. So let's get to this because there's still some moves here. Uh, number one is Marvin Gonzalez. I mean, they could DFA Marvin Gonzalez. And if they do, uh, you know, the corresponding move to me would be bringing up Oswald Peraza. His versatility... You know, with Oswaldo Cabrera's versatility that, the, that he's already shown the Yankees in his first two games will be a valuable thing. And I'll get another young, dynamic hitter in here who can steal bases and play um, <clears throat> play multiple positions. Now, a word of caution, okay? If you're going to do that, because they're not playing Marvin Gonzalez enough to begin with, to begin with right? Playing him once a week or in garbage time, that's not enough for him to be productive. So if you're going to make a move like this and call up an Oswald Peraza... Please don't sit him 90% of the time. Please play him. That's the only way we're going to see whether these kids have the ability to be productive or not. Same with Oswaldo Cabrera. Same with Estefan Florial, right? It's just, it has to be that way. It has to be that way. So, that's, I mean, to me, that's move number one. Okay? And I like Marvin Gonzalez, but at this point, I think they might go with youth and more athleticism and maybe some more... Um, you know, better contact hitting or something. Or something. I mean, Marvin Gonzalez is versatile. He can play multiple positions, but they're not utilizing the guy, <clears throat> which is disappointing. But, And I know from the emotional standpoint, he still has the stink of the Astros thing tied to him. So I know some folks would want him gone just for that reason alone. I get it. But to me, that that, that is a sensible roster move transfer there. Marvin Gonzalez for Oswald Proz. And plus, it'll give us an idea to see what this kid can do. Okay. Number two is moving Albert Abreu, DFAing him as well, and bringing up Clark Schmidt. Okay, to me again, Clark Schmidt, he's been they're, they're, they're stretching him out to be, maybe become a starter, and which will give them some more options. And also, to me, and again, I said this before, it gives them the ability to they're either going to play him long relief or put him in the rotation and put Luis Severino in relief in the bullpen for long relief. Three innings of just nasty darts. I think it's risky proposition, a risky proposition to put. Severino right back to the rotation. I just I'm not comfortable with it, but it it sounds as if that's what they want to do. I would still put him in the bullpen and move a kid up, uh, give a kid like Carl Schmidt a shot. Okay, um, and that's that's to me. I mean, and again, it gives the Yankees a little bit more <clears throat> time to work on issues that the you know that Frankie Montas is having. And I said this last night in the live stream too. Is I, I'm noticing some release point problems. That they have to, in my opinion, that they have to iron out because it's making a lot of his pitches hittable. He still has good stuff and good movement, but they're hittable. He's not locating them in the right place, and I think it's some of it's some of that boils down to release point. And so they, I think that's something that's it would be a good idea for them to work on and refine because he does have the ability to be a legitimate number two, but there's still some stuff that needs to work on. And the whole, I don't buy the whole. This is Sonny Gray number two, blah, blah, blah. I let people make these ridiculous judgments after two or three games. Sonny Gray couldn't hack it here for like a year and a half. So this is a different story. All right. And let's, let's, let kind of, let's, let's stay in reality here. The whole Sonny Gray number two and the whole Estevan Florial is Joey Gallo number two. Get real, okay? Come on. Fl Florial's got like 20 games in the major leagues. And, P and he doesn't even play on a consistent basis. People expect him to, to just hit bombs like he's doing... In, in AAA, he plays regularly. He plays every day in AAA, just like all these other guys. Can't just expect him to come up to a more difficult league, not play him as much, and expect him to play just as well. That's the definition of insanity. Okay? Right there. I think that's ins I think it's just ridiculous. But that's just my opinion. So, move number three. This could probably be... I mean, this is probably the most difficult one, is DFAing Aaron Hicks. I don't think it's... I don't think it'll happen... Because the Yankees are not in the business of eating contract money. They like other teams to eat contract money. It would probably be a wise idea and give him a change of scenery. So maybe he'll resurrect his career somewhere else. But, and again, that spot, <clears throat> you either bring him back a Tim LaCastro, right? Or somebody to that degree just to get some speed and athleticism. Because we're going to have Ryan Bader coming back. 
okay? And most likely he's going to take uh, uh, starting innings and days away from Hicks anyway. So at this point, does it make sense to just DFA him? Uh, he doesn't have any much trade value at this point. I know they're probably going to try to trade him in the offseason, but right now, to me, DFAing him is probably a good idea. And replacing him with a, you know, and, and it, to me, again, not replacing him with someone who would think we can be a starter, because I think Bader's going to be a starter once he's healthy, but somebody like a Castro or somebody else in the outfield. You know, I mean, you know, and then this, for me, there's another fourth move that, that is possible, but I find it un- unlikely as well as DFAing Cal Higashioka and bringing up Ben Warfett. He's healthy, he's in AAA. He's a lefty compliment. I think he's going to. Be, I personally think he's going to be a lefty righty platoon with Jose Trevino in 2023. Anyway, he's the same elite pitch framer and, and kind of uh, he does the same skill set as Jose Trevino does. And he also bats from the left-handed side, and he's got a cannon for an arm behind the plate. So that could be a potential another move. So if I wanted to do four moves, it could be four moves. You could DFA Hicks and keep LaCastro up, or you could uh, DFA Higashioka, even though he's got a little bit more service time left. Workfed has several years of service time left, and he's significantly younger. So, just a thought. But let me know what you think of these moves, because I think any any one of these moves or a combination of these moves could put the Yankees, can make the Yankees a little bit better. And again, like I said with the other players, any player who hasn't been up here needs a little bit of time to transition up. Needs a little bit of time to adjust. Just like Oswaldo Cabrera, he's he's doing pretty well so far, but expecting the same type of production that he had at AAA is a little premature. Okay, at least in my opinion. So I would be patient. I just like being patient with Esteban Florial. As much as some people don't want it to be that way, it's still important. Anytime you transition up to the major leagues, it's <laughs> it's a pretty big transition. There is no league higher than the major leagues. None. It doesn't exist. Okay, so those are the th- I mean, to me, I think these pieces of perspective need to be maintained as well. And I know it's, you know, we're Yankee fans, we're passionate fans, we're emotional friends, we we wear our heart on our sleeves a lot. I get that. I get that. But I also like to maintain some kind of semblance of sensible thinking, too, and logical thinking. Um, I don't, you know, I don't like relying on emotion or metrics without, or or while abandoning common sense. You know what I mean? I don't like doing that. So that's just, and again, I'm not speaking on anybody else's behalf. I'm speaking on my behalf. That's the way I I roll here. And people that know me, people that watch this channel, know that. So, but that's what I wanted to go over today. I mean, these moves, any combination of these moves, three or even four, um, can be, I think, put the Yankees on, on a better path. And I think the least likely is probably the catcher one. I think they're maybe considering the outfield, the Hicks one. And again, it's position for position. So you designate an outfield, you bring an outfielder back in, the Castro. And he's shown his worth up here already. And some more speed and defense would be a good thing. So... I mean, you can even essentially once once uh, Bader's healthy, you could you could do it if you if you're gonna if you're gonna sit Stanton one day, give him a rest day. You could put Judge over to DH, and you could have Speed, Benatendi, LaCastro, and Bader in the outfield. You would have a light. You'd have a almost a track and field relay. Because you'd have an elite fast. I mean, it, it gives them so many possibilities, so many possibilities in terms of speed and defense and base running chaos. So what without sacrificing. You know, the other things. You know, you'd still have Judge in there, you, or unless he has a day off. Then you'd have Stanton. you still have your power guys, Rizzo and whatnot. So that, to me, these are sensible replacements. Like moving an unproductive player for a potentially productive player is a good I think, is a good idea. And LaCastro's been relatively productive up here. So you let me know what you think, folks. Let's get into this. Obviously, I'll see you later when the lineups come out, and hopefully the Yankees will write it today. I think it's I think it's JMO against um, Kevin Gaussman, who was one of their hired guns that they brought in this offseason. So hopefully the Yankees will get this uh, get their asses in gear today. And obviously if any other move uh, comes out, any piece of news in the Yankee world, you're going to get it here too. So talk to you guys later.